Well, it is Friday, Grit Nation. And that means that I'm going to work. And they are working on the parking lot here right where I need to drive. That's what you hear, the big saw. Give me a second. It's going to get louder as I get closer to him. They're doing some patchwork. Morning, Liz. Patchwork in the parking lot. So, Coffee with Coach, episode 11. Morning, Jennifer. How are you? Hope that you guys are having a, a fantastic Friday. I've already been up and going at it this morning. Had um, some things I had to handle to take care of, some emergency things. Not like emergency as in really bad, but emergency as in necessary and timely and needed to be done. So, got up, tacked it. Went at it, got it taken care of. Morning, Angie. How are you? Got it taken care of, and now I'm headed into work. Got my coffee. And so that can only mean one thing, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages. It is time for Coffee with Coach. Leadership is life. Leadership is living. Leadership is all around us. Leadership. Something very, very close and dear to my heart. Leadership can make a company break a company. Leadership can make a person break a person. Leadership can rise up nations and can devastate populations. Leadership is key. Leadership is important. What's up, Kevin? How are you, brother? Bonnie, Michelle. In my lifetime, I've had the opportunity to be surrounded by some amazing leadership. I have also had the honor and the blessing to be humble or to be surrounded by horrible leadership. You know, like coach, you just said you had the honor and the blessing. I did, and I have, and that's how I look at it. I truly do. You say, well, coach, I'm not in a leadership position, so I'm not really sure if I'm going to get anything out of this coffee with coach you see I could actually do a whole series on leadership ironically I kind of do when we do our leadership workshops for those who want to take up leadership positions within the grit for life network leadership you can go to any bookstore go to Amazon Kindle whatever it is there are libraries throughout the ages of content dedicated to leadership. I think leadership is something that is vital and is important. It's basically stating, you know, as indicated in my opening lines. Leadership is something that is powerful. More to Jacob. But I think that leadership also is something that is very misunderstood by many and rarely, usually misunderstood by the masses, rarely understood by the majority, and then the minority usually can find an interest and a somewhat of an understanding and study it. When you saw the title of this, you may have said, you know, I don't know if you can see the title. I don't know where the title goes. I don't know if the title just shows up when I post it. But when you start hearing me talk about leadership, you may start zoning out. There's a few reasons you might be starting to zone out. One is, again, you might think it doesn't really have to do with you. You're like, Coach, I either am unemployed, B, or A, B, I work a job that I don't have any leadership responsibilities in, or C, I think I'm a pretty good leader, coach, or D, none of the above, it just doesn't apply to me, 
And I think that's one of the misconceptions of humanity when it comes to leadership. When we look at the mission statement of Grit for Life, Grit Nation, we look at the, lead, the, the mission statement of motivating, encouraging people to motivate their mind, build their body, and search their soul. Leadership is throughout all of those words. If you feel as if you are not in a position of leadership, then this Coffee with Coach 100% is for you. I've, as I stated, I've had great leaders and I've had bad leaders. And I've learned from each and every one of them. It took me a while to understand that. It took me a while, not with the bad leaders, not to sit and gripe and complain and participate in the gossip of the water cooler and just be miserable. It took me a while. Awesome. At, when it comes to good leaders, good leadership, we value that and we, we thrive under that. We soak into it. But at times, we can also take advantage of it. Where do we fit into that picture? Where does leadership fit into our life? We are all leaders. You say, Coach, you um, you do realize I'm watching this. Like, you're taking this, you're watching this, and you're hearing my words, and you're saying, Coach, I don't know if Coach actually knows that I'm listening because I'm I'm the furthest thing from being in a leadership position. If you are alive today, if you are living today, if you're breathing today, even if you're not feeling good, you are a leader. You're a leader of your life. You're a leader of your immediate circle. They say some, they say leaders are, some say leaders are born. Others say leaders are made. They say there are leaders and followers, and to an extent there are, but I dare say that all of us in our life need to be leaders. For if you are only a follower, and if you only see yourself as a follower, then who is leading your life? Who's the leader of your life? You see, we all have at least one team member that we have been given in this world to lead, and that is the person in the mirror. We are required and it is expected of us by the grand scheme of the universe that if we're going to be anything and go anywhere and accomplish anything at any time within our life, we have to follow our life leader, ourselves. And if we are expecting to live a good life, if we're expecting to be successful, if we are expected to be a good person in the role that we play within the universe, we have to understand that we have to be the leader of ourselves. Because there will be times in your life where you will find it to be only you. There will be times where the universe will block everybody and everything else out to see and to put your leadership skills to the test. If you break, if you fall apart, if you choose not to move, if you become frozen, then you are not leading yourself. Instead, you are following yourself, but with no leader. It's like the blind leading the blind. If you are an individual that focuses on the negative, then your leadership will be in your life will be negative because you're the leader. If you're someone who freezes up and when things get hard and things get tough, then you you can legitimately say you work under a leader that freezes up when the going gets hard and definitely tough. Don't get going. They freeze. You cannot be someone who complains about leadership that does, that is in your life, meaning the bosses or wherever, whoever, the other outside leadership. You cannot complain about them if you're not being your own personal best leader. For we cannot complain about something that we are not. We cannot expect others to be amazing leaders if we are choosing not to take the leadership role of our own personal life and treat ourselves the way we would want to be treated by another leader. That strips away our ability to be able to complain unless you wish to be a hypocrite. 
I don't think anyone got up this morning and says, heck yeah, today's my day to be a hypocrite. I get to be a hypocrite. No. Now, if I ask you, are you a good leader? Many of you may say, yeah, I, I would say that I am. I just have to be given the opportunity, but we are not actually taking the opportunity we've already been given. We are just living our life aimlessly being thrown around by the winds of change and the waves of life. We're not taking to leading and being the captain of our own boat, our life, our destination, our way of being able to see life, do life, live life, experience life. Nope. We're just like a whole bunch of privates that have been left to their own demise who waited for the sergeant to walk out of the room and now they're going to just play around and not do anything until the sergeant walks back in. We might be the leader that creates chaos. We've all had those leaders. We've all had those leaders that we might be the leader that just aimlessly requires those they lead to perform unnecessary tasks just to be busy. You might be that leader. You might be that one who just aimlessly goes through life just doing stuff that has no purpose just to fill the time until the time is filled. To fill the time until the time is filled. Meaning there's no rhyme or reason or purpose or reason and then we wonder why it is that we get nothing done, nothing accomplished and we make no forward progress. We remain in place concreted I have an individual that I have a leadership role in my company and I was talking to another leader just yesterday and I said you know we we're talking about someone who works and someone that we're leading or this individual was leading and I said you know when I saw your associate I truly had high hopes I, I had actually planned on mentoring them I had planned on trying to build them and to mold them, but now that I've spent time around, I realize that they just do aimless work. They do a lot of work with no purpose. They mean well, but i they're just filling their day that we are paying them for with aimless, meaningless effort just to appear as if they're actually working to be able to feel good about themselves, but they're not actually accomplishing anything. Maybe we are that type of person, that type of leader that just expects us to just aimlessly move through life and we fill our day with mindless, non-purposeful stuff. You hear me say all the time in Grid for Life, you need to ensure that your thoughts are purposeful, your actions are purposeful, the words you speak are purposeful. Everything that you do as you begin to grow and as you begin to become the leader of your life and understand that role, everything you do should be focused on moving forward, building a legacy. I had someone here at Grid for Life that actually made a statement the other day that I had to laugh at because it was true. The statement they stated meant a lot to me because it is how I live my life. And they asked me, they said, I don't remember, oh, I know what it was. It was a photo that I had taken. My wife and my family and I, we went to the Renaissance Festival here in Colorado and I had, my wife had put, I, I went as a Viking and my wife had put uh, runes on my head and it looked like a tattoo and I had one of the members of Grit for Life. What's up, Tracker? I had one of my members of Grit for Life, one of our members of Grit for Life say, hey coach, what is that? Why did you put that there? What's its meaning? Because I know, and this is the part that meant a lot, I know that you never do anything without purpose and intent. That is very true. I've learned that as a leader. Learn that as being a leader of my life. Learn that as being a leader in the universe, in the positions. I seek out roles of leadership. 
Now, I'm not going to give you every special key. Yes, you did. Tracker says, just finally caught you live. I uh, am not going to be able to, in the short period of time, coffee with Coach, I cannot open up the world and pour into you a full universe of leadership principles. I don't have the time to do that. My hope and desire today is to give you some principle, but to have you take a look at leadership in a different light, understanding what leadership means to you and you leading your own life. Because if we can master that or seek to master that, then we can start seeing how it bleeds out into the universe and the roles that we are given and the roles we seek. You see, I love leadership. I love making an impact in people's lives. I seek it. I thirst it. I hunger to make a positive impact in my world that I get the honor of being able to live in every single day. Because the more I make an impact, the more leaders I build, the more leadership I instill, the better the world becomes and the more leadership we have and the more understanding of how things should work versus how we just accept them to work. So my goal today, my goal this morning in this opening monologue is to show you maybe how to take a look at leadership in a different light. How do you lead yourself? What are things that you would expect of a leader? What do you consider as good qualities of a good leader? We all have had them somewhere in our life, whether it be a teacher, whether it be a pastor or priest or rabbi or whatever your religion is, whether it be you've just had a good boss. My boss recently said something to me. She said something about being a boss. And I said, no, you're not a boss. And she kind of looked at me like, don't you know I am your boss? I said, boss, you're not a boss. I said, you're a leader. There's a difference. You see, my my leader at my work, the one who is directly over me, she, she's about, I think she's about my age, a little younger maybe. Good morning, Lisa. And she's a true leader. She cares. She truly cares about the people that are, that work for her, that she supervises. She cares about how their life is going and she, she does what she can to ensure that they have a well balance and the way that she handles those who work for her then encourages us that we want to do the best this morning I got a call from her I get in the car I'm headed out she calls me she goes hey I know what you think you're doing today what my plan is what my schedule is and I know what your days are off days off are this week and I was wondering if you would be willing to make some changes because I need you to do something I'm going to tell you right then and there, she did, she knows. My my leader, I'm going to call her boss just for title, my supervisor. She recently said this too. She's like, you know, I know that if I, you don't ever say no to me. The reason I never say no to her is because I know that first of all, she takes care of us. Second of all, she truly cares. Third, I know that she would never ask us to do something that she wouldn't do herself. And third, I know that if she is asking for something to be done, it needs to be done. It's not aimless work. There's a reason because she has instilled a foundation that is respectable for us to look to to follow. I actually told her the other day, I said, I need you to understand In the 46 years that I've been alive, I have had the opportunity to be led by some really amazing leaders. And I would put you in the top three, because I would. How do we do that for ourselves? How do we lead ourselves? Do we lead ourselves? Are we supposed to lead ourselves? Maybe I'm just talking out my ass right now just to make up something to talk about with coffee with coach. Maybe you're going, coach, I, I don't get it. Fair enough. I'll just turn this off. Let's go back to my favorite saying. Let's go back to the very motto of my life. Let's go back to the foundation that I seek every day to, that is the the principle of my life. The principle of my life. 
You hear it every single day that you watch something with grit nation and grit for life. My response? My responsibility. Tie it all back to that because truly it is the true essence of how I live every single day. If my response is my responsibility, who is responsible then for where I go in life? Who is responsible for the things that and how I react? We cannot be responsible for the outside forces that penetrate our lives. Things that happen from the universe that impact us from the outside in. But we are in charge and responsible for the things that happen from the inside out. And so if we take our if we take a look as if we are the CEO of our life, because we are, then we are responsible for the growth and the continual expansion of who we are and how we operate our company, aka our life. We will have those people that will come and they will experience our life, our company. They will have an interaction with our life, our company. If Google reviews could be done on your life, what would they be? Now you say, coach, but I, I, you know, that would mean that I would have to work on pleasing other people. And you've talked about how we should only focus on ourselves in the aspect of we need to work on ourselves. Don't need to worry about what other people think. So if, so, if, if you're saying that our life is a company and what if we could do Google reviews, isn't that thinking of, isn't that a contrary to what you've taught before in the aspect of saying, well, someone's going to write a Google review or concerned and worried about what they think. Janie, good morning. Now, you see, for if I am running a company, let's say Grit for Life, I'm running Grit for Life, I'm staying, I know the basis and the principles, the foundation that Grit for Life, Grit Nation was founded upon. If I am maintaining those principles and I am growing the brand and growing the company and continually expanding it but not steering away, every decision I make is based upon the principles and I'm leading this company in the right direction based upon the mission statement of my company. And then we have someone who doesn't agree with it and they write a, they write a review and they say, well, he was mean. Oh, well, okay, let me take a look at that. Let's look at that. Let's see what it means that I was mean. What was I mean? What do you consider mean? Do I need to be concerned about it? Is there something there that I need to work on and build? Because I, I did screw something up. Mean is when you take a look at it, you start digging, you go, well, they put that review that I'm mean because I didn't respond to their email right away. Or... I said I was going to get back with them, and because of the life I live and the continuous, rapid pace that I run, I'm human, and I actually forgot. Didn't intend to. Wasn't like I blew it off. I legit forgot. Okay, you could consider that I was mean, but I really wasn't. So again, am I worried about what they're saying? Not really, because I know the rest of the story. So I'm not speaking in contrary terms. I am saying pay attention to it, take a look at it, dig down, take a look and say, okay, my response is my responsibility. They gave me a Google review of my company and they said I was mean, but that's because I wasn't, I didn't fulfill what they expected, but I did not jeopardize or compromise my life principles. All right, not going to worry about that. But then I looked down to through the reviews of my life or the reviews of my company, let's say Grit for Life, Grit Nation again, and someone says, hey, I felt like when he was giving me advice, he didn't really give me any context. He just kind of rambled. He just threw some stuff out there. I felt like he was brushing me off. And then I take a look at that. I go, well, that's a pretty good detailed review. Let's take a look at it. Let's go back to the mission statement. Motivating the mind, building the body, searching the soul. Let's go back to the foundation. My response is my responsibility. Did I do that? 
I'm not worried about what they say per se. I'm taking a look at myself and asking myself, is that genuine? Is that real? I'm not just taking their hyperbole, what could be hyperbole, and taking it and just saying, ah, I don't care about what other people think. I'm going to take a look at it. So, okay, they said I didn't give them any contacts. I take a look at the message. I'm like, yeah, I guess they didn't. And I remember when I wrote this email or this response back, I was in a hurry and I just wanted to throw something out there to make them feel good, which is not what I do. Yeah, there's some truth to that. I need to take a look at it. As a leader of my company, my brand, i that's true. Those who are on TikTok, you might have seen my first thirst trap video the other day. And obviously, if you haven't seen it, you may not understand this, but the first my first thirst trap video makes it look like I'm about to take my clothes off and this caption reads, what would it look like with your clothes off? I know, I did this on purpose, I know that there are people that saw that video when that video started, they were like, wait a minute, this isn't Coach. What is Coach doing? Is Coach not who I thought he was? The video is a, is a play on words because at the very end of it, the video cuts to, I have my clothes laid out on the floor as if I'm wearing them and I'm not in them and so my clothes are off off it's a joke I had numerous people say Ooh, coach you scared me I was wondering you see I kept true to my brand as a leader I kept true to myself I kept true to my principles I kept true to my ethos you see as a leader we have to understand what is our brand what is our mission statement and how are we going to lead what do we want to be known for in our leadership? And there's only one person that can lead your life, and that's you. So if you're sitting here today and you're saying, I'm not a leader, I'm a follower, that's a problem. Because you are the only person that can lead your life. So let's look at the principles today. Again, this is not covering all of leadership. I could do a whole workshop. I could do a whole year of Coffee with Coach on leadership. I have studied leadership to the very depths that I can study. I work on leadership, on the outward side of leadership, meaning from inward out and not outward in. I work on it every single day. I look on how I lead my family. I look on how I lead, I'm a leader as a father, as a husband. I look on how I lead in the world. I look how I lead here. That's not all what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a personal connection to the understanding that you lead your life. How are you doing that? Let's take a look real quick. What is your mission statement? Do you have a mission statement for your life? If you don't, you should. Those who've done our workshops before, several of them, you've heard me talk about we did the ethos living life. The ethos, the principles that drive you, the principles that you live by. I have an ethos for my daily life family first. Family first and foremost. You've heard me tell the story before that my kids know and my son talks about. They call, I drop everything. Or I at least text back and go, give me a second, I'm calling you back to where I can find a place to call. My kids, my wife, my family first. My son talks about the day that he called me when I was a law enforcement officer. I literally call, he calls me, I answer the phone, I said, hey, is this an emergency? He goes, no dad, I just needed to talk to you about something. I said, well, I'll call you back in a second. He goes, Okay, I said, well, I'm in the middle of arresting somebody. And I literally was putting the cuffs on while I'm talking to my son. And he just started laughing. He goes, Dad, are you kidding me right now? I go, no. I literally am arresting someone. I'm putting the handcuffs on someone. I'll call you back. He still talks about to this day because he knows that my principle, my foundation in my life is family first. And I showed it that day when my son called me as I was arresting somebody. What is your mission statement in life? Mission statement for Grit for Life, when I began to build it, Grit Nation, when I began to build it, I said, okay, what am I, what are the principles that I'm going, <laughs> I knew you'd appreciate that, Tracker. What are the principles that I want to build Grit Nation, Grit Life on, Grit for Life on? I know I want Mind, body, and soul are the three pillars or the three gears. So how do I how do I change that? Well, I want to motivate people. So motivate the mind, okay? I want to teach people to have a good body image. I want to teach people the right way of how to live a healthy life. Not a gym life, a healthy life. All right, so building the body. 
And I want people to understand and I want to encourage people that their soul is just as important and they need to search it. Ah, searching the soul. So the mission statement for Grit for Life, as I became the leader of Grit for Life, Grit Nation, I said, our mission statement is to encourage people to motivate the mind, build the body, search the soul. Foundation, my response is my responsibility. Your response is your responsibility. These are the principles. And so what do you do with that? Once you activity, there we go, now I'm back. Once you have built your mission statement, then you start, or your ethos, and if you're interested in that, for those who didn't do the workshop, go check out an ethos-driven life. Go, go YouTube it. There's a lot of good principles on there that there's a lot of good videos that talk about it, and I'm considering doing another, oh, this is not what I wanted. I considered doing a, another series on it, but when you find principles, a leader, in order to be a good leader, you have to have principles. You have to have something that is your foundation, your handbook, your guidebook, your rules of leadership. You have to take a look, and if you're gonna be a leader of your life, then you have to know what that means. So what is your life mission statement? What's your life brand? We've done videos on this. We've done Coffee with Coach or something like that. We've done one of these morning videos on your brand. So to establish your brand, establish your mission statement. And then you start taking each day and looking at it and saying, how is what I'm saying fit into my mission statement? How is what I'm doing today in my life advancing my company forward? Your company being your life. What is your goal for this year to accomplish? What is your goal for this month to accomplish? What is your goal for this week to accomplish? If you don't have goals, if you haven't established that, then you are like a company who's trying to sell anything and everything just to make a profit and you're not going to make a profit. You're going to lose. You're going to lose. You have to have buffers and guidelines and a direction. You have to take the leadership role in your life. You can't expect someone else to step in because it's not their life. It's not their company. This isn't a requisition. Is that a, a proper word? It isn't a takeover. Nobody gets to take over unless you allow them to, and then that's you even got more problems. So today, what I want you to do is establish today. In your journal, I want you to think about this today. What is my mission statement? If you don't know how to write a mission statement, Google it. Figure it out. Do some research. Don't expect Coach to give you everything free. Come on. got to learn to research on your own. Research it. How do you drive a mission statement? How do you write a mission statement? How do you live by a mission statement? And then take those principles and write one for your life. And write it in your journal. Write it in a piece of paper that you can put in your mirror or your refrigerator. Somewhere you're going to see it every day. And you're going to memorize your mission statement. And you're going to begin to ask yourself, as a leader of my company, as the CEO of my company, as the director of my company, is what I'm saying today in line with my mission statement? Is what I'm doing today in line with my mission statement and the goals that I've set? Set goals for a week. See how you can do. And then lead your life. Be the leader that you always wanted to be. In your journal today, write down principles. If you had not heard this, and I just started off today and said, I'm gonna ask you the qualities of a good leader. What would they be? What are the things that come to mind? Write them down. And then ask yourself, are these qualities in my life? I'll tell you right now, uh, my, my view of a good leader is someone who has integrity. My view of a good leader, so principles of a good leader is someone who has compassion and empathy. Somebody who has drive, somebody who will not ask me to do something they're not willing to do. Someone who leads by example. These are all things that I would say are, are my view of a good leader. There's some other things, but I'm just using those to start off with. I'm going to write those down. I'm going to take a look at it. And then I'm going to ask myself, are these what I'm showing today? Someone who has patience. Do I have patience? Do I have integrity? Do I have compassion? Do I have empathy? 
do I ask anybody to do something I wouldn't do myself? As you begin to build your mission statement, as you put down your qualities of a leader, then now you have the map for your week, your month, your year, your life. You now are starting to build an ethos, a set of principles that you will use to lead your life. And as you begin to become a good leader, you will value that within yourself and that builds self-worth. That builds value. Someone comes to me and says, Coach, I don't have self-worth. It's because you're probably not leading your life. You're allowing the world to lead. You're allowing others to lead. Coach, I don't feel like I have value. That's because you haven't put any investment into your company, a.k.a. your life. When you begin to do this and you spend time doing it, you become stingy with those you let into your company. In Grit for Life, Grit Nation, my face is all over it. I have built this to be able to help encourage you. I am very, very protective of those I put into leadership positions within the company because they don't just represent grit for life. They don't represent grit nation. They represent me. And so if I find, if you come to me and you say, hey, coach, I want to be a leader in grit for life. Do not take it personal. If I say no right now, because there's still some learning you need to do. Because in order for me to put you in a position when you do something that is contrary to the mission statement of Grit for Life, the principles of Grit for Life, that doesn't necessarily reflect on you. People aren't going, I'm going to say this for lack of better words, people aren't going to remember you. They're not going to think of you. They're going to think of me. And when you begin to invest and build value into your company, aka your life, and you lead it from the front and you begin to truly be the leader of your life, you begin to find value and self-worth as well as you become very protective of who you allow to have a role in your company, aka your life. Good leaders do that. The company I work for, the leaders that I that have show, that have led me in this company have made have created value in this company for me. I protect the brand of this company every single day. I value the brand of this company. I speak this speak up in the brand of this company. Why? Because I own the company. I don't, but in my life and everyday work I do. You owe you you own your life and you owe it to you to be the leader that you need to be in your life. Leadership is living. Leadership is life. Your life. Your investment. You want to know worth? You want to have value? Build your brand. Find your mission statement. Live it and lead it. Your response? Your responsibility. Go grit it today.